There's no shelf life attached to sandbox shooters anymore in the streaming space from a spectating standpoint. Like, it's, it's proven. Every single year Call of Duty comes out, how long does multiplayer last? From a viewing standpoint, from a spectating on YouTube or the Purple Snakes or Facebook or Mixer. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Holotide here, and I just got back from Raleigh for the HCS event. Cloud9 is your first Halo Infinite Champions. It was very cool to see Penguin get his first land victory. But this weekend was pretty big. Hindsight is always 2020, And I will never fault people for having opinions, even if they're bad. But I do think that it's important that we reflect. A lot of large content creators from Dr. Disrespect, Nade Shot, Courage, King Richard, so many of them said that Halo Infinite would fail shortly after release in terms of player base, in terms of viewership. Not having a, a battle royale is really gonna hurt Halo. Dr. Disrespect said that there's no shelf life attached to sandbox shooters anymore. Nade Shot has obviously tweeted, you know, that he is extremely disappointed that he doesn't have a Halo team yet. And I can see why after this weekend. Nate Shot also said, you know, back in July before the game released that Halo purists don't want a battle royale to be integrated into the franchise. Do you really believe Halo Infinite will succeed without capturing this massive wave of new generation players that have now only grown up with BR titles? Call of Duty is the perfect example. But is it though? Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that a battle royale would not increase viewership or the player base, because it absolutely would, especially if it's good. Warzone is pretty much trash at this point. You know, I, I don't play it. I see everybody complain about it. I see all the bugs and glitches and everything, and they've completely, I guess, ruined it. Apex is, you know, probably my go-to in terms of a VR. And again, while I think Halo would be, you know, successful with it, I think Halo will also be successful without it. I think Dr. Disrespect said that it wouldn't survive three weeks after launch, and man, was he wrong. Again, hindsight is 2020, and looking back to what Courage said in March, I've played Halo since 2005, it's my favorite game series of all time. If Halo Infinite doesn't release with a robust and well-made battle royale game mode, then it will be one of the greatest gaming failures in history, and that sparked a huge meme where people just copy pasta and put in ridiculous things. So let's look at this weekend in HTS Raleigh. Using esports charts, I tried to figure out, you know, just some viewership statistics. The peak viewership was 267,000, with an average viewership of 111,000. But that's just for the Halo channel on Twitch. Obviously, YouTube was streaming, and they also partnered with large streamers such as Summit and Cloaksy and Myth to co-stream the matches. So truly, it was probably a lot higher than that. It obviously doesn't hurt to have such huge names in the space, such as Cloud9 and E United, who were the finalists. FaZe, Optic, Sentinels, these are heavy hitters. So of course that helped. But I also think people were just genuinely excited to see the first Halo Infinite event. I definitely think that it exceeded expectations, especially after they got the main stage issues worked out. But this has also led to a lot of other people trying to compare Halo with other games that have come out recently, including Battlefield 2042. Recently, I saw a content creator say that, you know, Battlefield has the same amount of players as Halo Infinite does and pretty much the same amount of time frame. And while every game is going to experience a drop off after the first few weeks, I think it was a little disingenuous because they picked a weekend in which Battlefield was on sale and also had a free weekend. The 24-hour peak for Halo Infinite as of December 21st was 71,365. Battlefield, on the other hand, had 25,883 for their 24-hour peak. But before that, you can see that it was as low as 12,000 which puts it on pace with Battlefield 5, which to me is not very good. I also think that that's more of a global franchise. Halo was, you know, pretty much regulated to North America and a little bit of Europe. I think that Battlefield is a much larger franchise, you know, across the globe. But oh well. Basically, I made this video to say I am extremely happy and excited about the future of Halo. I think 343 is working hard to ensure that the multiplayer experience is top tier, and I'm excited to see how the events will unfold going forward. If you if you all enjoyed this video make sure you leave a like down below if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe as i grind away towards 10k that i'm never going to hit and i'll catch you in the next one peace